All right, guys, it's time to test more batteries. This time, let's test some lipos. Right, as far as we know, these are 8 amp hours, uh, and they're the SPIM08HP uh, pouch cells. These are the 3.7 volt nominal chemistry. I think they're probably closer to just like the lipos that people use in the RC because these are rated at 25C as far as we know. Um, these are, I think these came out of like maybe i saw an online that maybe they, they go like on buses and stuff like hybrid buses they use these to uh push like a motor right and so the reason why they could use these and they need such uh high c rating and such power output is because they in a hybrid configuration you only need a tiny little battery just to get the motor started and then the gas engine takes over and then keeps the bus moving so these are charge and discharge quickly uh, but they just need a lot of power out and so these are perfect for that because these are 25 C's right uh, 25 times their capacity that's how much power they can put out 8 times 25 is 200 so these should be a 200 amp uh, continuous cell right so let's see what we got Tom sent me 10 of these and so I've been cycling them now for a week and I got the last measurement with the internal resistance reading also, right? So number eight was the highest one with 8,312 milliamp hours of capacity. And cell number six was the weakest and lowest one at 71 or 7,118 milliamp hours. Getting the average is, comes out to 7724.5 milliamp hour. So they're not bad. They're, you know, within 300 milliamp hours from their stated capacity, right? On the average. I also checked for internal resistance. Checking online, it turns out that normal internal resistance for a battery, uh, LiPo battery, 25Cs, is usually around 10 milliohms. Anything higher than that 12 to about 12 milliohms then you you, you know you might want to start getting rid of it right so these come out to an average of 29.91 uh milliohms so 30 milliohms so yeah that you can see that there is some degradation in the resistance of each one of these cells right so if you wanted to use it for an rc application you probably would be, want to use these because their internal resistance is kind of high. But if you want to use it for another application, then, you know, the internal resistance of 30 milliohms, it's quite acceptable to do that. So let's go to the part where we test them. Let's test uh, the dead short. This is where I completely short the battery, the positive to the negative measure, how many amps it gives us. And then I record, you know, for how long and how hot it gets, how quickly it gets hot. Uh, and just, just generally see what happens when I short up. In the past, I've done 20 second tests, but this time around, because it is believed that lipo cells are much more dangerous and volatile, uh, I am going to leave them shorted out until something happens. Either the cell catches fire, it explodes, I don't know. I truly don't know what's going to happen, but I believe that lithium batteries are safer than most people. Uh, and so I don't I don't expect to see fire on this test. So let's check it out All right, apparently I deleted the main file and I formatted the card So I've lost essentially lost the main angle, but here I am trying to data recover uh, The card see if it you know, now luckily I had a secondary shot which is a thermal camera so I'm gonna play that now All right Okay, at this point, the my clamp measured 352 amps, and you know, 15 seconds uh, into this test, 20 seconds, it's almost 200 degrees. At this point, I grabbed the camera and started change my angle. Boom! There we go. So around 30 seconds the uh, cell exploded I mean it just puffed up there's no there's just like a little bit of smoke but absolutely no flames at any point it was just 
steam uh, and it was just the electrolyte that came out all right so 350 amps on a dead short for 30 seconds and then after that it, it exploded so pretty similar to the headway cells right um, I don't have a way to actually load the cell for 200 amps continuously but I do have a 24 volt thing and I got busy and started building a 7s battery pack that I ran a test using uh, loading it up with 1200 watts so let's look at that video now There's a SAG test. There's seven cells in a row for 24 volt, uh, 29 because they're fully charged. Here are, uh, they're all at 4.17. So within 34 millivolts of each other, we're gonna load them up with this inverter. 1200 watts, it's a 24 volt inverter. We're gonna see how much they sag. Let's do this test. Okay, that's one kilowatt, 35 amps, okay, that's one kilowatt, 35 amps, two, four, one, five, uh, is it counting? Yeah, it's on. Okay, so there's, uh, oh, there's quite a bit of sagging. They're 3.8 right now. Let's see the battery. It's hot. There's a couple. That one's a little bit hot, I think, right? Uh, cable's hot. That thing is hot over there. Lights are hot. That thing is hot. Can we load it up more? Let's see. Okay, let's put second speed. There we go. Let's load it up. At this point, I don't know if this test is actually useful. Uh, I can only load it up for like around 40 amps, and they seem to sag down to 3.7 volts. But I mean, that's to be expected. I think. I think the only thing useful for this is to let it run and just see how much we can squeeze out of this pack. Right? Should should be eight amp hours. And even though we started with a negative number there, because I had it backwards at the beginning. Uh, we should be able to figure out just how much we can squeeze out of this pack and see how those cells will react, you know, see one of the cells that is smaller than the rest and see how that happens. Let's take a look. All right, at this point, I had to stop this test because cell number six there is at 2.7. If you keep running current through it, then it goes into reversal. That's how you kill cells. So we don't want to kill that cell. You stop the test and you let it come back. All right, undoubtedly, some of you will ask me if you can use these cells as 12 volt batteries. Short answer is no, the voltage is wrong, and I'm going to test it to show you exactly why. There we go. It's all all right, so I'm pulling 37 amps out of the pack, 400 watts. 
This is a 3S pack, so it should be around 88.8 one hour uh, together. Let's see how much we can use before that inverter cuts out because it hits a low voltage cutoff, right? Inverter here is giving us an alarm. We're gonna wait until it finally just shuts down. There it is. So we did 57. All right, there as you can see, we only use 57.1 watt hours of the total 88.8 watt hours of the pack, the 3S pack that is in there, right? Which means that we left 31.7 watt hours uh, on the, uh, it was unusable, right? We left it on the battery. So that represents a 36% uh, of the battery that was left unused because the 3S batteries are too low of voltage. So basically you hit the low cutting voltage on, usually on a 12 volt inverter, and the 12 volt device and so it says that's it i'm shutting down because the battery is too low even though you still have 36 percent left in the pack right as opposed to the 7s right on the 7s uh pack was 207.2 watt hours and uh we were able to use 173 watt hours uh which m meant that we left 32 uh 34.2 watt hours right unusable it's almost the same as on the 3S and uh, 34.2 watt hours represents 16%. And that's actually uh, was due to the one cell that was actually smaller than all of the other ones. If all the cells were more uh, evenly matched, then that number was going to be a lot lower. So which means I would say somewhere around 8% and under 10% of the battery there um, and so that's why if you're going to use these cells, don't try to do 12 volts, use them on 24 volts, 36 volts, uh, with 10 S or 48 with 14 S. There you go. This is the review of these batteries. I hope this little review of these batteries are as helpful to you. If you need LiPo batteries, these are really affordable. And I hope this test helps you decide whether you want to try them or not. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank Tom for supporting and sending me these batteries so that I can look at them and review them. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bringing power back to Puerto Rico, getting the lights back on, has been a slow process on the island with more than one million people still in the dark. Tonight, our week-long series on Impact Puerto Rico continues. CBS 12's Yedemi Farinas shows us who on the island is now taking action. Yedemi? While we were in Puerto Rico, we met two guys who are lighting up homes using recycled materials to create solar generators. In Puerto Rico, some can afford $20 a day for fuel to run their generators. Then there are others in complete darkness. I'm not going to forgive myself if I do, don't do something. Javier Camacho was born and raised on the island. I was so desperate trying to find a way to help my friends and my families and the people in Puerto Rico that I was actually trying to find out a way to make a battery by myself. That's when he came across Jehu Garcia, who lives more than 3,000 miles away in California. This is the United States. People shouldn't be without power. Garcia is a YouTuber. I'm back to Puerto Rico was teaching people how to build solar generators, so he came to Puerto Rico to do just that. See, most people think of Puerto Rico as being a disaster zone, as a tragedy. I, I see it as an opportunity. You can imagine what we could do with a little bit of power from the sun. The solar generators contain batteries, an inverter, solar change controller, and different connectors to get the power flowing. And then it's a simple extension cord that connects the generator to the solar panels. We could light up a fridge, lights, you could name it, we could do it. 
So far, they've turned on the lights for about 30 families across the island. So being able to do this for my country, for my island, I feel really blessed. Their goal is to collect enough donations or recycled material to reach every single person who is still living in the dark. But I think they will, you know, they, they will stand up, they will overpass or surpass this and they will uh, they help the, themselves. And I think uh, we they just need a little bit of help. CBS 12 News was there as the two men installed the device in a home of an elderly woman who lives by herself and has been in the dark for four months. We'll have that story for you coming up tonight on CBS 12 News at 11. I'm Yaremi Farinas in the studio.